real quick before we get into today's video just want to thank all the people over on patreon for all their support because without their help the upgraded content that you see on the channel that you really see in the video essays and a few of the lore discussions would not be possible without their help obviously the youtube membership filler arc is still ongoing but i can say over on the patreon that you get sneak peeks of videos months in advance patrons also get priority on the q a's every three months we do an anime and manga haul and i give away a lot of good goodies in that and it's also just really cool to talk to you guys in the dms and if some of you guys have theories that you want me to talk about on the channel obviously i will talk about your theories just send them to me over on the patreon but with that being said let's get into the review yo what's going on everybody it's your boy nora to explain here bring you guys another review for boruto chapter 64 and now that boruto chapter 64 is done in the books we got a lot to talk about from that vanish of a singon greatness to some of the strategy that was implemented into the battle of boruto shiki version 2 going up against code and then obviously we got to talk about the ending shot where boruto looks like he's having a heart attack so obviously if you're an anime only fan if you're still here you've been spoiled by a lot of stuff so i apologize for not giving the spoiler warning earlier on so from this point on i'm assuming you guys are all caught up with the manga so let's get into the actual review so the chapter opens up with boruto finally being able to stand back up and he has his aura flaring he's staring down code code and kawaki they're looking neither one of them is able to fully comprehend what's going on and when code realizes what's happening the guy's like, oh my god, this is pretty cool. I'm getting to see you Notsuki's know, power up close and personal. And we get to see Code for a little bit. Actually have a fanboy moment because it looks like he's enjoying getting the opportunity to fight against Boruto as he's using Momoshiki's power. So that was a nice little touch right there. However, I will say that I did think there was good characterization where we get to see the flashback and we see another sign again that Masashi Kishimoto's back writing because we're seeing more flashbacks being utilized and the flashback that was chosen was the memory of Kawaki being told by Momoshiki that he's going to take Kawaki and feed him to the ten tails in order to get the chakra fruit and so as Kawaki's recalling all of this he's like oh my god this is Momoshiki however we get this shot where Ada's looking and Ada that eye is still activated and Ada is putting two and two together. And we're seeing what makes her so deadly in the sense that she has all this information. There's nothing that really gets past her. And as this is going on, Code is just like, yeah, there's something off about you. Why has Momoshiki's consciousness surfaced this much even though you're just a vessel? Something isn't right here. Boruto's just staring at Code. And then that's when Boruto has that moment where it's kind of like how Naruto told Tsunade, like, hey, just stand back, I'll handle this. Boruto has a chat moment where he says, Kawaki, it's about to get dangerous here. And before Kawaki can even reply, Boruto's just rushing towards Code, and Code immediately looks shocked because he's like, oh my God, Boruto's really fast right now. And Boruto is weaving the hand signs. He's got the Shadow Clones, and it's interesting to note that the Shadow Clones, they don't have the Karma Seal on them. So from what I've seen on a few comments, there are people saying that there's a huge error made here. People are panicking, saying, my God, they have a whole month to do this. What's going on with Ikimoto and his assistants, which as a reminder, Ikimoto does have assistants, just not the same number that you'll see with other monthly mangaka because Ikimoto still does his own backgrounds. I think people are panicking over nothing. I think that everybody's seeing that this is a mistake that wasn't caught by his assistants or that there was a retcon made here. I'm going to disagree with you and here's why. If you go back and you look at the Boruto manga, in particular, you look at the chapter when Sasuke used the Matarasu on Boruto's Shadow Clone. If you look at Boruto's hand, Boruto Shiki's hand has the Karma Seal. However, the Shadow Clone does not have the Karma Seal on his hand. So I don't think this is a mistake like some people are saying. I do like the fact that Boruto is hitting Code hard enough that Code has to brace himself. Code is thinking to himself, how the hell did Boruto get this strong? And I like that because that's another sign right there that Boruto's powered up even further and Boruto's drawing on some of Momoshiki's power. I don't think in this moment right here, we're seeing Boruto fully use that 80% power that Momoshiki has. However, Boruto's doing just enough that even Ada is looking at Code saying, 
you're playing around right now stop playing before he messes around and kills you and i think that that's the key wording right there i think that just as boruto was able to off boro because in that moment he shocked boro and was able to power up and defeat him in a few attacks i think that we're in a situation now where if boruto is able to tap into that full 80 percent power he might be able to critically damage code and what i like also is that boruto is using those shadow clones and they're coming at code and they're just whamming on this dude and we see how code is just blocking the attacks and he's using his claw marks and he's swiping through the air at a lot of them and he's throwing the black studded belts onto him so we're seeing a little bit of strategy from code in the sense that code is trying to re-establish the battlefield and he's going through the claw marks in order to put some distance and get the sneak attacks and be able to take out some of the clones and i like how boruto's clones are just going through the air code is just striking back at all of them however one of the things that code does is that he's able to pop out of one of the black studded belts that was placed on boruto's shoulder and code is going for some very savage attacks he's actually piercing through the abdomen of some of the clones and he's taking out the shadow clones pretty damn quickly in this way so i do like that we're seeing a little bit of strategy from code and the way that his fighting style with those claw marks are being used is very similar to minato's flying raijin so i did think that that was kind of interesting to see that but the other thing too is that we get this really cool scene to where boruto has a shadow clone that gets in front of the real board so it grabs onto code's arm it just yanks out code right then and there and even code is looking at boruto and he's like how in the world did he yank me out of this belt and the shadow clone is just tossing code onto the ground and boruto finally lands a clean hit on code and that's the important thing right there even though code is getting into his belts again to put more distance between them we're seeing the fact that code even though he's been warned by ada that something's going on with Boruto and that he needs to stop playing with them and that he needs to take this fight seriously before he gets himself killed, before he can get his limiters taken off, which is a reminder if he gets his limiters removed, then Code is gonna be even stronger than Jigen. However, Ada also says like, hey, it's these drugs that Amato gave him. So it does look like Ada was fully aware of what was going on with a model which again that just shows that ada having that intel that's she's the dangerous one any assault that's going to be on code or damon you got to take out ada first this is really giving me vibes of the akasi suppression arc where team 10 got told like yo you need to take out kakazu before you take out heat on i think that this is a very very interesting use of the character code right here as well as ada now moving a little further on the scene shifts over and we have Naruto and he's telling Eno like, yeah, I need you to stop searching for Kawaki's chakra. It looks like that's going to be useless. Looks like Boruto's telling the truth. However, I need you to focus in on Boruto's chakra, expand around the village, look for my son. And Nishi's making excuses like, I can't believe I got outsmarted by Gany. And it's just like, yo, dude, you are absolutely useless. I don't get how you even became a Joni, but that's another video for another day. But Naruto is using shadow clones right here and we get this moment where we realize that naruto is checking off all of the boxes before he goes out of the village and i do like this side of naruto in the sense that naruto knows the situation is dire however naruto's gathering all the intel he's making all the preparations before he goes out because he's dealing with an enemy who's even more powerful than he is and you see that in the sense that shikamaru is talking to naruto he's like look you lost karama you ain't that guy anymore i'm not letting you go out by yourself sasuke's not made it back to the village and naruto thinks that shikamaru's trying to tell him you can't leave the village you're gonna have to stay here that's not what shikamaru was saying he's just saying that i have to go along with you because sasuke's not here to back you up and we get the revelation that sai is guarding amato and because they know that they're potentially dealing with an enemy that can pop up anywhere and code has those claw marks outside the village shikamaru tells Eno, make sure you watch the area around the village so they're really putting Eno to work right now because not only is Eno in the sensory team having to search all the nooks and crannies inside the village and outside of konoha 
and outside the radius of Konoha, but they're also having to monitor what's going on with those straps as well. So I do like that we see a little bit there in terms of how the strategy element's being implemented. And we get this shot where Hinata pops up and Hinata is in full mama bear mode. She's like, man, I'm going out there with you. We're gonna go find my son. And it kind of makes sense. Like Hinata's got the strongest Byakugan that's inside of the Hidden Leaf Village. I did a whole video breaking down Hinata's true power and skill, more so the skill set that Hinata has. However, the thing about that is that Naruto looks at her and Naruto says, look, I know how much you wanna go find our son. I understand that, I respect that. I love you for it. I'm paraphrasing right now, but Naruto basically says, I love you for all that you're doing, that selfless nature that you have. However, you gotta think about our children right now. What do you think is gonna happen to Himawari if something bad happens to you? Granted, Himawari is 10 years old and Himawari isn't a small child. However, Naruto's looking at it and he's basically saying, I don't want my children in a situation where it's bad enough they'll lose me, but if they lose you, they won't have any parents. Sure, they'll have grandparents and et cetera, and that goes on all over the world. There are kids who are growing up with the grandparents, but Naruto understands what it feels like to be an orphan. He does not want that for his children. I personally respect that. I think that Naruto's coming from a very sincere place by making that request. I like how Shikamaru is basically stepping in and Shikamaru's like, look, I'm going to take a brunt of the punishment right here, which is Shikamaru steps in and he says, I understand how you're feeling, but don't put Naruto on the spot like this. And he's more so saying it because it's a version of Naruto who's fighting with himself in the sense that you have Hokage Naruto and you have dad slash husband Naruto, or as I like to call Naruto, dad Kage. It's a situation where Naruto's at war with both sides of himself. If he was not Hokage, I still don't think he would allow Hinata to go with them. But it's one of those things where Naruto also understands that if Ko comes back to the village, somebody needs to be there to protect Himawari as well. So I did like seeing that. And I like how Shikamaru basically says, could you just go along with Naruto's request at my order? And that's kind of basically Shikamaru saying, I'm asking you as a concerned friend for both of you. And I'm also asking you as a official of Konoha to follow my order. And stand down and it makes sense because shikamaru is one of the two eighth hokage candidates you have shikamaru nar and you have sakura uchiha those are the two characters who are next in line to be hokage and so it makes sense that shikamaru is saying like hey stand down this is a military operation hinata is still a shinobi she's not retired like people are saying she just doesn't go out on missions but she's still considered to be an active ninja but what we get right here is that shikamaru is throwing his weight around as naruto's advisor and as the two of them begin to set off himawari's tugging on her mother's sleeve and i think that that's nice you see some of himawari's innocence right there from a writing perspective that's a really good way to indirectly humanize the conflicts of naruto and hinata very nice touch right there and then the chapter then cuts over to the battle with code and borto and borto basically looks at it like somebody who is fighting against minato where you know minato has all those flying thunder god markers all across the battlefield so one way you could try and do it is what the four for ikage did which is he memorized where all of minato's markers were and was basically keeping track of them as he was trying to fight minato borto's realizing that's too much of a hassle to try doing for these claw marks especially as he starts adding more markers so you're in that situation where board so it's like i got karma let me see if i can't just absorb these claw marks and we find out that even though a majority of it is materialized chakra because it is something that code was able to make inside of its own body because it's mixed in with his actual blood it's considered a natural substance so the karma seal can't absorb it and I like how in this moment right here, we're seeing just how deadly some of Amato's cyborgs are, which is a reminder, Code is a cyborg, just like Kawaki, the human beings with artificial enhancements. But what I like about this is that as they're watching the situation unfold, Kawaki is telling Boruto, you need to be very careful. You're depending on something that you don't understand. You can go on a rampage again. 
And Kawaki's basically like, look, like if Momoshiki pops out, there's nobody who can stop him from taking me and feeding me to the Tentos. Kawaki's in survival mode right here, but he's also very concerned about Boruto. And we get another revelation that's going to be very key moving forward. I think that they're planting the seeds for Amato to reveal more about Ada because as code starts talking he's like yeah that's a side effect of those drugs that you got from amato if you pay attention to the conversation that borto and kawaki had neither one of them name dropped amato however when code is talking code is like yeah you got those drugs from amato and borto's thinking how does he know about those drugs and that's interesting right there because that's dropping the line where boards is going to bring that up later on in a model. So I'm like, okay, they did wake up Ada and they're going to give you more information about Ada. So I did like that. And you get this other interesting thing where the more clues are placed in there because code, as he tries to take Kawaki says, I'm going to take you to her. That's all the information that's needed for Kona, how to be made aware that Ada's out there. And now their whole game plan is going to change. And I think that this is the reason why Ada is getting very frustrated with code because that element of surprise that they had by having somebody like ada who has all this knowledge and information is completely gone now and so if ada has weaknesses amato's likely the one that's going to know it so i did think that that was an interesting choice on masashi kishimoto right here and i did like how code was talking he said like i'm just going to come back from you when you get further along in your otsuski genetics and I'll feed you to the ten tails there, but I'm going to play with you a little bit more. And again, you just see more of that riff with Ada and Code in this chapter because of the situation that Code is placing Ada in. And as they begin trying to mix it up and fight for the third time, we see how Kawaki's using the shadow clones and trying to fight back against Code when Code tries to grab him. And Boruto's using the Vanish from Rasengan and code is like oh my god okay this is something that i wasn't expecting this can be a very nasty jutsu so i did like the idea that we're seeing somebody acknowledge borto's banish from a singon as his signature jutsu i think that it's important for borto to have something like that moving forward i hope to see borto implement more of that in the future as he begins to kind of carve out his own status and legacy as a shinobi we also get the revelation that naruto finds where borto is using sage when he says he's 40 kilometers to the northwest and that's roughly about i'm going off the top of my head but that should be roughly about 20 to 25 miles right there and naruto is telling shikamaru my improved sage mode will be more than enough for this situation let's just hurry up let's get our asses over to borto it looks like code is there let's just get there and rescue my son and after borto almost tags code with this vanishing rasengan ada is just patronizing code and rightfully so she says that's dangerous you're an idiot i told you if you don't take him seriously this kid might mess around and kill you which is a reminder that doesn't mean that borto by himself has killing power of code but if code is playing around and his guard is lowered and borto hits him with the attack with killing intent he can take out code that's why having your guard up matters a great example of this being used in the Naruto manga would be how when Naruto surprised Kabuto and used the Rasengan against him, Kabuto, if he didn't reinforce his stomach at the last second, Naruto's Rasengan could have killed Kabuto because Kabuto was playing around with Naruto. He didn't think that Naruto was capable of something like that. And you're seeing another side of Code's arrogance. And I think that that arrogance and that playful trollish nature is going to be his downfall just as borto begins to start trying to fight back once again borto all of a sudden is dropping down to one knee he's having trouble breathing it looks like he's very confused borto is making a fist and then he's grabbing his chest borto's beginning to sweat and then he just falls down onto the ground so we're seeing the side effect of these drugs and borto's at a point to where he can't even make words so it looks like borto's having a bit of a stroke right now either a stroke or he's having a heart attack and that's very interesting because it does show that these are side effects for these drugs and it does make you kind of wonder how many Hugo clan members did 
a model do the experiments on in order to get these drugs and are these side effects that we're seeing a byproduct of that which i do think that that is the case i'll make a video going further in detail about that but i do think that boruto's having this reaction specifically because he has hugo clan genetics inside of him i think we're seeing right now why a model told naruto make sure he and hinata do not take these drugs because he said it could be potentially fatal i think that we're seeing a little bit of that right there so my chapter question to you guys is number one how did you feel about naruto telling hinata stay at home was naruto right to be thinking as a father or should naruto have been thinking as a hokage in that moment let me know what you think about that in the comment section and then also how did you personally feel about borto as he's fighting his code i will say i did like some of the strategy elements however i also will say keeping a buck 50 with you guys i did feel like we needed to see a little bit more in terms of the hand-to-hand -hand combat borto has a biakagon right now borto has been trained by the hugo clan he knows how to expel chakra through his body points borto knows the gentle fist fighting style i'll probably end up doing a whole video explaining to you why that's the case however we didn't see borto do anything other than his normal fighting style but the return and the way that the vanish rasengan was utilized i thought that that was very nice i thought that some of the panels where you saw the reactions to code i thought that those were very well done i did think that there were some moments where the paneling was a lot better than what I was expecting going into this chapter. So we are seeing improvements. I'm glad it just wasn't 100% Taijutsu. There was some strategy implemented into this. I'm really hoping that this is a sign that Ikimoto is starting to come up with more creative ways to use the Vanish and Rasengan. And since Kishimoto's doing the script, I'm also hoping Kishimoto has some ideas to that as well. The same thing with this being the very first fight where Boruto is using a Byakugan in battle. I'm a little disappointed we didn't see Boruto utilizing some of the Byakugan abilities, like that nearly 360 degree field of vision, but that just means we have room for improvement here. I really wish that we would have got a little bit more, but maybe that's just me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, but as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.